climbing bushcrafter Jim Shields here today and I would like to show you how to make a very basic and simple axe sheath today. I was gifted this beautiful splitting axe by my friend Zach and uh, it doesn't have a sheath so that's a little dangerous. So I would like to make a sheath out of leather today. Uh, thanks for checking out my channel. Before we get started I would love for you to click subscribe right down there somewhere, little red button, and if you could like and share this video I would Greatly appreciate it. Let's make an axe sheet. All right, so the first step that I'm going to do is, I'm, again, I'm trying to make um, somewhat of a replica of this sheath that fix, fits onto this wood tools axe. Um, I like it. It's simple. So as you can see here, again, I am not an expert at making sheaths by any means, but all I really did was laid the axe here and made some lines, folded it over, and then I added a half inch all the way down that's going to be cut it out and see if it works i'll have to trim this up a little bit but this is where uh, my snap is going to go like this next i'm just going to trace it onto something a little bit thicker like this manila folder right here so that it's a better template and i keep all my leather templates in this thing here's a couple templates i have for the mora Eldris. This is a cool one for the Mora hook knife that I made. That's right here. This is used in spoon carving. Whoops. A nifty little one. I like this. Leaving about a half inch for that welt. Mark the half inch line there. If this comes down, closes up, this can come up. Some veg tan leather here. I'm not sure how many ounces it is, but it's a good thickness for a sheath. Kind of wish I paid more attention in high school in geometry. I struggle with these, some of these curves and stuff like that. And now we have to trace the template onto the leather. This is going to come up and now we have to make the welt that's like if you look in a sheath that's this part in the middle this is the welt so that when the axe goes in there it doesn't cut if you have stitching this is the welt should lay in like this i have to trim it up but it'll look like that all right our next step here is to use our leather set glue. the glue up Bring it over. Now you got to keep a lot of pressure on this and it's going to take a little while to dry so we're going to clamp it down. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to open up the clamp here. Tighten that up. All right so we just got done the glue just got done drying. Take these off so it could stay in there pretty good. Notice how it's not perfectly smooth. Now, I am not a leather expert, but I'm going to cut that um, so it is a nice smooth line, and then I'm going to burnish it with a piece of wood, and you'll see what that does later. Is it? could either sew it here with a saddle, saddle stitch, or I could use some of, my, um, some of my rivets. These are rivets right here. Right there. Rivets right here. And that's what it'll hopefully look like when it's done nice and burnished. You see the welt in the middle there? So right now, mine's a little bit messy but we'll get there. But I want to make it uniform so all three levels and layers of leather are somewhat flat. I kind of like working with leather because you can mess up a little bit and as long as you get close to the point, it usually works. You wouldn't want me building a bridge or anything like that. Um, I'm not exactly always calculated and I, I like the imperfections in bushcraft and leather and I don't know, it makes it more unique. I'm sure I'll get better as I 
practice more, but I don't really do leather that much, but it is fun to be able to make your own sheath and we're getting there. The next thing is I have to mark where I'm going to put my rivets. So I did a little measuring. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to put five rivets in here, three layers of leather. It's coming together. It's going to get placed like this. This is going to fold up and it's going to snap right there. Got to poke the holes for the snapping. So basically, create some friction, smooth it out. It's kind of like sanding the edges, makes them nice and smooth. Take a little bit of that off, kind of go all the way down. Now this part's pretty fun. You get to take some leather dye and you get to dye it, shake it up well. And my favorite tool in working with leather are these little Q-tip things. So basically, I'm just going to dye it. So the dye came out nice. I like it. Now it's time to put these rivets together. We got five of them here, so just poke these all through. And then the other ends, you're just going to put these little ends i forget what they're called but they snap down so now you have to use the mini anvil right here nice and flat and then there's a curved um, striking device and we'll put it down on top and we will give it a smack with the old hammer it should look like that still look All right, now we're going to insert the pieces to the snap. This piece is going to go inside first. Bring that up through. And then this piece is going to come down. And now we have to get this anvil underneath. And then this special tool right here that's going to fit directly inside of that size snap. Yes. Max. Now this comes around and snaps. And there's your sheath. Not too shabby. Push up the edges one more time. And then we're going to put some wax on it. Okay, the final step is to waterproof the sheath and put a nice coating. I like to use this snow seal. First thing you have to do is heat it up. So you need a blow dryer. Don't use your wife's blow dryer. Just buy one at the Goodwill for like $3. And that's what I do. So you're going to heat the leather up and then we're going to let some of this um, soak in and then just watch. Uh, my favorite thing about this is that it changes the color. And after a couple of coats of this, it's going to make it a darker, a darker color. Sometimes I get it in these rivet holes, but whatever. It'll just melt out with the blow dryer. Get it on there. Kind of leave it on there thick, and then you'll see it'll melt into the um, leather. So look, this is the old side here. This is the color of the old side, but when it's treated, it gets really nice and dark. I love that look. It looks really good. And there we have a beautiful sheath done, waxed, and this is what it looks like. Again, I am not a leather expert. The spacing on these is a little bit off. Wish I was a little better at math, but I love the smell of it. I love the way it feels, the way it looks and it is very useful. Thanks for checking out the video on how to make a very simple sheath out of leather. A few quick things if you want to get started in leather work. Well, where do you get the leather? There's a place in Philadelphia called Tandy Leather and they have them all over the country. 
you can talk to a representative there and they'll help you out to get some pieces of leather that make sense for project that you're doing. When I was first interested, I just asked a million questions. I went into the store for two days straight and just had them teach me how to make anything I could. And that's how I learned to use some of the basic tools. You can get the basic tools for pretty cheap. Now there's always expensive versions of different tools, but you really can get started in leather work pretty cheap and, and it is a lot of fun. And the thing is like, it's all for you. You're not really selling anything, at least I'm not. So as long as it's functional and it looks cool, um, I like it better than buying stuff online because you know, it, it has a little, your own little touch to it. You could put stamps on it, you can paint it. So anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Click down here to subscribe if you like my videos and feel free to share and comment down here in the section if you have any questions or I'm sure you have suggestions because you know, there's a lot of things that I don't do right, but it's just the way that I do it. So thanks for watching.